And we're back awesome. in hour two of the actual play start answer. All right, cool. Uh, so without too much further ado, uh, I think that we're just going to jump right into, uh, I'm going to avoid this tiny bit of chat there. Um, we're going to jump right into like the action and actually have like a fun little space adventure. So um, let's have a quick conversation here. Um, Lauren, uh, the question that I have for your character, uh, well, actually, I, I should say, Jory, the question I have for about Lauren uh, is, um, is Lauren constantly with the crew at this point? Like, have, have you guys established yourself as like a, a, a well-known group? Um, uh, or are you still like off and on trying to do like investigative reporting and uh, journalism and stuff like that? Uh-oh. Uh-oh, I, I think, think you're... Oh, can we hear me now? There yes. you go. Now okay. you're on top. Great. Um, I think that Lauren is kind of constantly trying to do that, but also is not a person who can defend himself very well. Okay. Um, and so is very much with the crew, but I feel like it's still news to people that he's with them. So if people know him, they'll be surprised to see him. Um yeah, but it's also like trying trying to steer things in such a way that he can get the info that he wants to get. Awesome. Um, so this adventure is going to start uh, start with you folks walking into um, uh, you guys. You guys are going to be walking into Watering Hole. This is on uh, so uh, the Rin system has a planet called Aleph, and Aleph is a toxic gas covered bit of a kind of a crap hole um but it's got it's mineral rich and it's got like a uh, deposits of stuff and um above it is the moon of warren and warren has been turned into an ecumenopolis uh which is a fancy way of saying that there's a city that is the entirety of the moon right like so like the whole planet is covered in city um, wow impressive well, it's it's very space opera. Remember, one biome per planet. Um, yeah. So <laughs> the biome here is city. Uh, but uh, uh, so so it is also the seat of House Malclay. So this is where the governor's mansion is and things like that. Um, and it is it is multi tiered and multi leveled, right? So like uh, there are very tall buildings in some sections, and like the lower you go, the kind of like rinky dinkier it is, and like the more smog and stuff there is. And, like the higher up is where like the more wealthy people are. Uh, but because the, the Rin system connects to the core worlds and the rest of the hegemony, um, it tends to be like a, the final stop off point for a lot of the goods coming out of the sector. And uh, it tends to be like where a number of uh, seats of power are, even if it's not necessarily the seat of culture. So mm. um, you folks are on the moon named Warren above the planet uh, named uh, Aleph. And so like... If I am allowed to set the scene here, uh, the the night sky is there, and there's this like greenish yellow, uh, swirling gas covered planet above you, um, and and you guys are are walking through a cityscape. Now, you've uh, you've actually just completed a job, so this is supposed to be the point at which you do a handoff, right? And and so the job went smooth, maybe a little too smooth. Um, <laughs> I don't like the sound of that. Right. Actually, I, do, guys, I do like the sound of that. You guys, you guys have a, a, a metal box, uh, and it's it's pretty well sealed, and you are going to connect with uh, potentially one of um, uh, Slick's previous contacts, maybe from the H and N, maybe not. Um, but uh, as you're walking towards your meeting place, you realize that there is a um, an escalated presence of uh, the system police. So um, mm. the, the cops in the run system all wear like the Mill Clay badge and they tend to be like, like you guys, you guys see them kind of like on corners milling about and like looking at little dockets and kind of like trying to figure out what the hell is going on. Um, by the time you walk into your bar, it's obvious that they're like questioning some patrons mm -hmm. and you're not hundred percent sure what's going on, but you're, you're a little alert and kind of on the defensive. And, yeah. How uh, big is this box that we have? Is it concealable on a person or is it obvious that we're carrying something? Um, both. Uh, I'm going to say <laughs> that, it's, uh, that it's concealable on a person, but it's definitely not going to be missed in a cursory search even. It's, um, I don't know, it's maybe like two boxes of, of, of tissues, like the, the rectangular, like Kleenex boxes. Yeah, okay. Put together. Big cigar box. Yeah. 
Um, and it's, it's obvious that they actually use like a, a somewhat advanced locking system. Like this is not a trivial security box. It's like a well-protected attache case where if you have a, a drill or an appropriate like laser cutter or something, you might be able to get in, but it's not something that you can just do casually, right? Mm -hmm. uh, so as you folks are, are walking in to meet with your contact, um, you sort of, uh, like, you, you walk through the bar, you know, you're, you're, you're avoiding the cops because, like, nobody wants to deal with extra heat for, you know, S&G. Uh, and then you pull back the curtains, and as you step in, uh, you realize that your contact is sitting there, and it's dark, and it takes a couple of seconds for you folks to realize um, that there's, like, blood pouring out of their neck, and, and they've been killed. Um, so you're standing here with obviously illegal goods, cops all around you, and a dead contact. And of course, there is the always popular question of what do you do? So we've <laughs> just uh, we've just like pulled this like curtain aside to like walk in. Yep. Uh, um, and, 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 like, and like you step in, and yeah, the curtain's still open behind you, and you realize that there's a, a like yeah. there's a table, and there's there's literally a dead person sitting there. Um. Nice. So I want to say, I don't think Faye is like really great with dead people, but I do think she's quick-witted enough to go, you know, just kind of like, <laughs> no, nothing to see here. And just closes the curtain behind them so that at least we have a moment to, to sort of confab about this, like before someone mm -hmm. looks, like just turns over because it was dark in here. So hopefully someone just saw a silhouette or a shadow of a person and not sure. the blood. That's about as much as she can contribute at the very moment. It's like, and I'll close the curtain. And then she's just like, <laughs> I think she doesn't want to say anything. So she just kind of looks at everyone like. Yeah, I think Lauren advocates like, we have to pretend like we walked in and found a body, which is true. You know, that's just what happened. There are police here. It's their job to deal with this kind of thing. This face that you're making, Faye, exactly. Make that face at the police. Yeah, exactly that. And I think that we need to, you know, not talk to the police. Well, I think we just need to get them to focus on this murder that clearly happened rather than us. That we are victims, that we have found a dead body and it's terrible. Maybe, maybe, maybe. maybe. Who, who's holding the, I, I kind of imagine that Boz is holding the, the yeah. box. Yeah. So maybe Boz shouldn't be here or should. I should yeah not be well Watch whoever's it. holding the box shouldn't be here maybe maybe mm -hmm. i i look to yeah. lauren like like maybe please please say yes uh, my 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 glittering uh my glittering gems are all like a light i'm like like putting them on my jacket <laughs> <I'm> like, <laughs> you like take it off your jewelry and like well i think they, they're, they're all like glow they're all fake glowing like they're glowing because they've got like a, a, a power oh, source in them so i'm like i'm like they like the on and off thing is like tiny and really like, oh like, yeah and they're like <laughs> under a little flap and they're like yeah. you know, yes um maybe you two should talk to the police I really don't want to talk to the police. <laughs> okay, I'll run out and scream. And I, and she totally whispered, I'll run out and scream and scream, oh my God, there's been a murder. And I'll point there, but you have to be going, like, let yeah, me we'll, first. We'll sneak out. You sneak out and I'll scream. Okay. I can think okay. I can handle, I think I can handle screaming. Yeah. <laughs> Great. Awesome. Uh, All right, so yeah, that's the plan. So let's let's talk about this real quick. What this sounds like is like it's a, a it's a setup action where um, uh, Faye is going to be running out and trying to lie to you and distract the the system police in order to have um, Hazard and Slick get away under the, the the cover of the chaos and the other things that are in yeah. There. So I think I'll first try to draw their attention to me, like. Like, like I'm so overwhelmed that I can't even point to where it is. I just like come out just terrified and then, which I am, that's not a lie. So <laughs> that's not going to be hard to pay. And then, um, and then, and then once I see that they've stuck past, then point like there. So that's how I envision this working as a setup where like, I'm not going to just jump out and point in because you two would be, would be in there. So. would be hanging still. Yeah. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. All right, cool. Does that um, sound, sound doable? Yeah, totally. Uh, so this sounds like this is, at the moment, uh, this is a risky sway, right? Yeah. Uh, sway being the action that governs lies and also theatrics in charm. And so uh, the reason it's risky is because the risk here is that the cops will want to talk to you a lot more in person than 
yeah. just to calm you down, right? Like they'll sure. want to come with them to the station and yeah. things like that. So yeah. um, I get it. So, uh, before we start, uh, there's a resource in SNB that is not available traditionally in Blades in the Dark, uh, which is to say that your crew starts with this resource called Gambits. Gambits are generated when you roll risky actions and you get a six, uh, but you start with some. That's uh, you, the, the, the pump is prime, so to speak. And you guys are, are a fortuitous crew, so you start with two by default. And because you are awesome and have a scoundrel on your crew, you start with an additional one because that's the scoundrel Yay. special power. That's my power is I give us extra, extra gambits. Nice. And, and gambits can be used to add additional dice to the pool. So uh, at the moment, uh, I'll try and come up with some cool tokens to use for gambits for next time. But at the moment, I'm just going to mark it on the sheet, ship and keep track of it there. So if that's cool, that's what we'll do. That sounds great. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Awesome. All right. I am totally excited about making a risky sway roll because <laughs> yeah. there's only one thing that Faye is good at, and that is sway. So um, I'm going to do that. Uh, a, uh, I run out and I, I, I make sure that like I get right in like the middle of several of the of the what what are the names of the officers? I'm going to call them blue coats if you don't tell me if I don't like have another name. So. I'm, uh, I'm, so, so the legion, right? Uh, the legion is military. Uh, oh. The legion is called in when you need to deal with criminals who aren't just like local riffraff, and you need to deal with somebody who has a ship, particular with ship weapons, because most people are not supposed to have weapons on their ships. They're like ships are supposed to be like cars. You don't mount machine guns on cars. Uh, <laughs> we so, are we are good. We do not have weapons on our ship. That's right. So when you need to deal with criminals that have ships with weapons and so on. Um, that's that's when you call in the legion. So the legion protects the gates and they protect the the routes between the gates, but they generally aren't on planetary. World. Yeah, they they aren't. You'll you see legion on planet, but usually when they're either hunting people or they're off duty, or uh, because Mount Clay is kind of a bastard, uh, he sometimes summons them to do his bidding because he can. I don't um, like that guy. Yeah, he's he's not a small person. Um, yeah. Uh, so cool. So yeah. So these guys are system police. System uh, police. Awesome. Yep. Awesome. Awesome. Cool. Uh, so, yeah. so, so Faye uh, always talks a little bit too much and uh, that's, that's part of possible. It's charming about her. She runs out and once she's like in the middle of them, she's like, officers, officers, officers. Oh my God. I just saw what has to be at least the third scariest thing I've ever seen. I mean, maybe second. I'm not sure. The first was the time when I saw a Zeno literally eating another one. It was part of a circus act or something. I don't know. It was supposed to be amusing, but I walked in the middle of it, and I had no idea that it was a joke, and so I thought somebody was eating somebody else, but it turned out it was just a big show. It was great. Everyone was laughing. I didn't understand why people were laughing. Anyway, I saw something that's at least as scary as that. There's it. And I'm hoping that by this time I've seen them suck out, and I go, there's a dead body in there! And that's when I, like, point... Awesome. In the direction. Uh, cool. So you should you should give me your your sway roll here. Yeah, let's do it. Let's roll that sway. Uh, I'm gonna try and be crafty and do it over here. So people can see it. Okay, sway. It is risky. My position is kind of doesn't matter because it's a setup action, right? Uh, correct. But it is a it is a standard setup action. So yeah. Cool. Excellent. And. Uh, do I want to take a gambit? I'm gonna say no. I'm gonna hope hope I can roll us a gambit instead. So let's see how it goes. Six. Hey. All right. So not only does it work, but we get a gambit because of it. Because that is action. correct. Because you because Sick. you didn't spend one. Awesome. So you guys are at four gambits. Sweet. Uh, I'm gonna adjust that on your sheets right now. Uh, nice. And so uh, the. Uh, you 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 put on such a convincing show that it's not just a good setup, but you're not entangled in this situation. And, and you see the you see the the cops run over, and you've got a split second if you want to actually uh, mosey on out with your crew. Um, yeah, they've got a group action. Uh, but yeah. what happens is the cops run in. They're looking at the body, and they're like, "Oh my god!" And somebody's like lifting up like the the head, and it's like a knife. Who the hell uses a knife to kill people anymore? Seriously. <laughs> and uh, you know, like the, the, they're they're arguing with each other and by the time one of them is going to look over their shoulder and be like excuse me ma'am like you can you can, you guys can can already be like hey. i would only have one reason for not doing that i just want to clarify that this bar that we're going this is not a laura's bar right this is not no. this is just some random bar. okay cool so it, we have no connection to this place right bar that you're meeting contacts in a shady part of town 
and apparently the shadiness got to them. So nice, awesome. excellent. Uh, so yeah, I would be totally happy to participate in the group action. I think yeah, let's someone else should lead it because you're the ones like planning the escape route. But I'm happy to 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 sally with and mm -hmm. be part of that be part of that group action at improved position or effect. Yeah, I think we've like kind of calmly walked through the bar to get more towards the door. Like it was mm -hmm. like we can't be suspicious. We're very official. It's fine that we're here, um, and we've kind of gotten <laughs> near the door, and we need to gather up Faye, and we're like, come, oh, come on, let's go, let's do the so, thing. So I'm happy to lead this action. Yeah. yeah. So this awesome. is how group actions work. Everyone's gonna roll. You're gonna keep the best result. Um, as, as affecting everyone. So if somebody rolls well, everyone rolls well, essentially. But mm -hmm. the person leading it is going to take a stress for every person that rolls uh, below a four. Mm -hmm. uh, so, uh, and again, the way the system works is you roll all your appropriate dice and you keep the highest die. Um, so the question that I have for everyone is, what is your skulk? Because the, the action that you use to GTFO is skulk. I've got one in skulk. That's pretty good. Zip. Zip, I've zip. also got... I've also got one in Skull. All right. So uh, if you have zero, this is the one time when you don't keep the highest die. Uh, mm -hmm. If you have zero in a skill, mm -hmm. uh, you're going to roll two dice and keep the worst of the two. So yeah. pushing yourself for a die or spending a gambit for a die or something like that is totally on the table. And it's uh, you can assist each other by spending a stress to give somebody else a die. Can we assist if we're part of the group action? If we're yes. also rolling? Okay. Um, I will totally uh, be happy to assist, um, be happy to assist Baz. And I think the way I do it is yeah, that like? we have traveled together. We have done all sorts of like miscreant kind of activity together. And I think that Baz and Faye have a, a kind of a, you know, silent call. Pro like yeah. signal, right? So we can communicate simple things silently. And so nice. right as like, we're kind of coming together and we haven't sort of joined back up. Mm -hmm. I see one of the officers and I give Faye, like I, I give Baz like the symbol, like go left, not right. Um, <laughs> and, and, and so it causes me stress because the officer's like watching me like pick my nose or something. Um, yeah. But hopefully it's that like gives you. The juke and whoop. Yeah. So I'm going to, I'm going to spend a stress that you get a, a get a bonus die. Nice. And so the end result does that mean I roll three d six? Uh, no, you'll uh, just roll one. One, instead of, okay. Yeah. Instead of so the two. You would, yeah, you would click skull, and then when it asks you about bonus dice, you input one. The good news is I have no idea what that means or where to and, find it right now. All right, and so we, we are risky, correct? Correct. Mm -hmm. This is risky because um, there is a number of people looking for you, and not just yeah. these cops. So yeah. depending on how how fun this goes, you may pick up. However, because I did a setup action, we can increase it. We can reduce that to controlled, or it, less, it, uh, or we can get better effect, which means we could get further away. Like we could keep mm -hmm. it risky and like get really far away before anybody might notice us. So, so. I'll tell you. I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to make a, a little. Uh, I'm going to make a little clock here called the getaway. Right. Mm. Mm. And we will we will use this to establish your initial position. Here. So the getaway. So can you guys get away with the the goods, as it were? How many how many slices are in our clock pie? There's eight slices in your clock. Boy, pie. that's a lot of slices. Well, there's a lot of very determined people looking for you. I'm yeah. The whole pizza. And they're, they're they're looking less for for you folks and more for uh, the thing we're carrying. So yeah. Uh, so let's let's do this. Let's let's start with seeing how far your stealth gets you before anybody picks up. Cool. So before the setup action, what position would we, would we be in? Risky. Risk. Uh, well, sorry. What effect would we have? Sorry. Uh, I am going to say standard. Cool. So that would be two ticks on the clock normally. Correct. So yep. we can either shift this to be uh, controlled, meaning we aren't particularly risking ourselves exposure to the cops immediately, but we won't necessarily get very far. We still get those two ticks, or we can keep it risky. And push that to three ticks by getting increased effect through in the setup action. We we get to choose um, which one we want. I I would vote for increased effect because I feel like it it is inherently risky. I think so to, too. To that sneak makes out. Sense. That, that makes, makes sense. a lot of sense. Yep. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Cool. So we're all risky with great effect, and uh, 
Yeah. All right, so, so the way that you do that is you open your character sheet, which you can find on the third tab in the little at the top of the little chat area in roll twenty. Uh, it's second tab for us. Third tab for GM. Tab. Uh -huh. right, sorry, I'm still getting used to some of this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So just, just go ahead and pop open your your character sheet and click on um, the skill skulk, and then go ahead and the position is risky. Uh, did we say that we're going for for great effect? Yep. Correct. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So risky, uh, click submit, uh, go for great effect, click submit, and it'll ask you for bonus dice. And in Andy's case, you get one bonus one die. Bonus die. Right. Yeah. Then, uh, uh, is ahead. this important enough that folks want to spend a gambit on it? Um, we could, we have four now. We could get a bonus die from, from having a, from make, trying out this special scum and villainy only mechanic of spending our, of trading our luck for, for better result. Well, I see Jory's role already, and yeah. Jory's role is a four. So, oh yeah, uh, one person is not taking uh, a stress <laughs> for sure. Okay, I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna spend a gambit. I was gonna say. All right, cool. Yeah. Go ahead. So, Andy gets a five. Nice. Let's nice. see if I can. And let's see if the the the. Let's see, if the, the let's see if the gambit plays off. The no. Oh. <laughs> no. Oh. Awesome. Uh, so the cool. good news is we get the best results, um, <laughs> which is which is which is Vaz's. Um, the bad news is I cause I cause I think in in drawing attention to myself I cause you stress. Uh, oh God! Blah, blah, yeah. <laughs> so I think I'm a little high strung in general. A little high strung, yeah. So, so, <laughs> so the, the leader takes one stress for every person who rolls a one to three, which I did. So. So I take one per person, not one per result. So I only yeah. take one. You just take one. One per person that rolled uh that rolled below. below. Right. Which so was, if all oh. of you rolled one to three, that would be three stress. But yeah. Three, in this case, but one. All right. Uh so uh here's the good news. Uh on a four to five, it means that you actually do the thing that you said you're going to do. Yeah. But there is a cost, a drawback, or a problem that comes with it. Uh so in this case, uh I'm going to describe the cost and the problem here. Uh, as uh, you folks come out of the bar and you look around and you realize, yeah, there's there's plenty of system cops and other things, um, and you see that several of the little clusters of system cops, among them, have these um, uh, individuals with the black and forest green clad colors of House Malclaith. Uh And so, like, mm -hmm. they actually have the official Malclaith crest, which means that they're actually the governor's personal guard. Um, so they're not just, like, Generic Joe Schmo. Yikes. Uh, uh, <laughs> and as a matter of fact, uh, so like you folks look around and you know, you see like neon lights and lots of like smoke coming out of a few of the bars down the streets. You see a couple of joints uh, that are serving like different kinds of like noodles and maybe some like fish from them and stuff like that. And looking around, you're looking for an escape route. Um, maybe around you, you see like some, some there's like a, a couple of people, there, there's like a, a, a biker bar, but instead of bikes, they have space bikes. So they have like swoops. Nice. Uh, mm. uh, in this case, they're basically hover bikes. And yeah. um, oh, uh, look at look, looking around, there's a couple of alleyways, maybe you can duck past those, um, or you can just try to fly casually. But as you as you're out and you look around, you notice that at least one of those black and green clad people looks over and sees you. And um, you also notice that there's a couple of people that are trying to look casual around the street uh, that, that kind of pick up the scent as it were. So you folks are away from the cops inside. You are no longer pinned. You have several escape routes. Uh, so you have succeeded in the skulk to get out, but you are spotted by people looking for you. So what do you do? Now where? Yeah, well, it seems like we got lots of options. One of them probably should be focused on ditching that Malkavian. Uh, Malkleith. Malkleith. Sorry. Oh, goodness. Oh, no. I know. Yeah, Let's not start that, Sean. <laughs> the Malkleith, 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 Malkleith. That Malkleith uh, informant. I mean, I don't know that, like, we, this, this, is, this is an important decision point for our characters. Are we the type of people to jump on hover bikes yeah. and try and f drive off on stolen hover bikes? Or are we the type of people to try and slide all through an alley, quite, you know, quick? Uh, or you can bolt. You can actually run, like, just book down that alley oh, and no. try and cut people off and lose yeah. them. In the <laughs> yeah. Okay. Lawrence up bodily and off we go. <laughs> 
Lauren would be inclined to be like, mm, here we are, we're just walking through the city, a group of friends, and kind of sneak on past. But Lauren, absolutely, if y'all jump on bikes, is going to be like going with you. So <laughs> I, I think that like walk casual thing. Well, Sh- Shosh, tell me if this is tell me if this is wrong. <laughs> It, that's that would work on the masses, but it certainly wouldn't work on the people who have already recognized us. Probably like, like we've been had, right? Right. So by like, at least a few people. Yeah, but it, the best they could do is buy you time. You definitely need a a move to break the the the, the corral that is forming from like a couple of groups looking for you. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. Do yeah, we yeah. do we know what's inside the case that we have? Uh, it's been sealed. Uh, you you were actually told not to open it and look inside, but we can easily flashback to mm. the point where somebody decided that that was a terrible idea and you just had to know what was in there. Mm. <laughs> uh, so uh, let's, let's, let's talk about the flashback mechanic. Yeah. Quick. It's super exciting. So one of the things that, um, if you watch a heist movie, right, like they always like go to the heist and then uh, like we can flash back to the part where you guys are, are planning or doing something in the past that is going to affect the present. So instead of micromanaging everything and being like, okay, so you picked up the case, then what did you do? Okay, did you go down this street or that? Nah, we don't care about that. So what we're going to do is we're going to be pushing forward. And then if you need to know something like that, you're like, yeah, we could have opened it in the past. Cool. So we flash back and a flashback costs zero, one, two, sometimes more, but usually zero, one or two stress. Zero stress is if, of course, you would have done something like that. that. That makes perfect sense. One stress is like, all right, that's a little contrived, but like, you know, it's fine. And then two stress is like, okay, that's pretty contrived. And it would have taken a couple of like weird conditions, but yeah, let's just do it and like move on with the story, right? So um, in this case, trying to force open the case is totally a zero stress flashback because <laughs> but it may have easily been curious. You know? Right, right. Yeah. I, I have another idea for a flashback that's specific to the situation, which is we might have left like, a rented hover vehicle out here knowing that these these deals sometimes need a quick kind of getaway mm. uh we might have pulled up with one rather than having to you know yoink a, a biker's one um although i do kind of like the idea of just stealing a biker's bike and flying off on it that does sound a little more appealing to me but um jory do you want to do you want to trigger a flashback to when uh to when lauren like just had enough of it and said let's crack this thing open <laughs> So we know what's in it. Yeah, because awesome. I'm interested. I'm interested in um, whether this is something that we're willing to ditch, or whether this is something that we feel inclined to hold on to. Nice, mm. nice. Yeah, I think that's. I think that's super relevant. Do you want to find that out when we're at a place where we have to cho- choose to ditch it, though? Because we can like wait till we're right at the point where like someone's got the blast or pist- the plasma pistols to our head, and they're af- asking for it before we find out what's actually inside it. Uh, right, or we, can, or we can know now. I think I think I want to learn now because it, at, cool. in this position, I think because like how important is it to hold on to this thing? Because maybe if we get rid of it, then maybe people will stop following us. Because yeah. Lauren's already thinking about ditching it. Is what, <laughs> I get it. I get it. Oh yeah. Like, All right. <laughs> compared All right. to yeah, that's, there, I might that's... be incorrect. Yeah. Uh huh. Awesome. Yeah, I'm interested in that, and and so I imagine that. Um, and Strash, tell me if this, tell me how this works. Like, do I just tell you what I think happened and why? Uh, so the way in? flashbacks work is, um, if needed, we're going to make some rolls. So mm-hmm. if you folks want to crack a case, we need to establish how are you doing that. Um, and yeah, you can just tell me that, or we can role play it where you folks had an argument, or we can just say like, if it's easy enough to hand wave, if it's something that obviously has happened and there's no obstacles. If you're like. Uh, P.S. I remember to bring a whatever. Then we can just say, yeah, that sounds great. Um, so yeah, you you tell me like, did you try and crack it open? Did you try and convince one of the others to crack it open? Like, w- what happened in in this flashback? So I always in my head imagine that we're watching a TV series. So you could totally be like, so yeah, we see like a smash cut to like, and this is like three hours ago, and then <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I imagine we get back and. This is this is my first job with this crew, and nice. I've been aboard this vessel where I don't even have my own bed. And um, <laughs> you're, you're just gonna keep bringing that up, aren't you? Long? Yeah. Oh yeah. Oh for sure. <laughs> and I'm just feeling like just anything nice would be really nice to have. And this space fruit container looks like it came from somewhere nice. Someone who oh, had it does. money. Oh, for sure, and and I think I've 
had it up to here with the situation on the ship and i'm like just, just anything like i want to know what's in here and can i like gaze upon something beautiful to take me away from this horrible situation that i've found myself in calgon take me away <laughs> so good. uh awesome so uh are you trying to like solve the puzzle box to open it are you trying to force it open with a pry bar how are, how are you trying to get into this case I think yeah and and are you calling on any of us because the flashback couldn't be totally solo it, and it, it could be you talking to an NPC character uh, although I if we're on the ship probably not but it it, mm -hmm. it uh it, or it can involve any of us too I kind of feel like it's something I do on my own because I feel like the two of you would not be happy about this sounds great um, and and were I to try to convince you it would take some convincing so I have on me hacking tools, which are probably more like, I, although they, they could work with the box, right? Yeah. Absolutely. I have hacking they will. Say the, we can say that the box has some digital components and you can totally hack it to believe that it's received the right code. Yeah, that sounds great. Mm -hmm. Great. That's what, that's what I'm doing. Awesome. Awesome. Uh, so uh, give me a, so what you told me basically is that you're about to make a hack roll. Mm -hmm. and, and see how this goes. Great. Uh, so, uh, what's your hacking skill? Well, actually, you have a sheet, so never mind. This is gonna yes. be easy. My hacking is one. Uh, do you wish to push yourself, which means take two stress for plus one die? Do you wish to spend a gambit? Um, or do you want me to give you a devil's bargain? I guess the question is, what's my position? It feels... Controlled. Con controlled, yeah. Absolutely. Um, I think there would be a great devil's bargain that it is patently obvious that you were trying to get in, whether you make it in or not. It's yeah. Like, that there's uh, like, it's a sign like that. That, that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like our Mark slash whoever ends up with this is going to know that we got in. Yeah. I like that. Cool. I dig um, it because getting in is important, whether you know what is in there or not. So go ahead. Cool. Um, so is that one bonus die uh, yes the... as long as you accept the devil's bargain the devil's okay. bargain happens regardless of anything else so we know now that somebody's going to know that you were in um oh. and you get to roll oh, half up with plus one die all right here we go yes did i get it you, you did. did and yeah! you got it on and the I second die <laughs> so good so that devil's bargain was so important right yes <laughs> ah. what Previous to this, uh, the box uh, had these like moving parts, almost like belts that were like rotating and like the code was like shifting and stuff like that. But mm -hmm. you connect your wires to it and you're like typing in and hacking and everything. And then uh, after you're done, those belts are never going to start moving again. Mm -hmm. uh, but for a split second, um, the, the, there's like a, a seam appears and it, and it opens with this like hiss and you see like some like mist come out of it. And for a split second, you're like, this is going to be beautiful. And then you realize that there's nothing there except for a small, simple, completely unadorned black stone box. <laughs> what do you do? Wait, are you telling me that there's a black box inside the black box? <laughs> yeah. It's like a Russian tea doll of boxes. It is a green box. No, <laughs> okay. uh, uh, I, I probably I roll my eyes and immediately open the box. No question. Uh, so do you, uh, I'm sorry. It's it's not a. It, uh, I may have misspoken. It's not a black box so much as it looks like a stone cube. It's maybe oh. maybe like the, the the size of a phone or something. Um, mm -hmm. I don't I don't know what. Uh, but I mean, you can, you can yeah, obviously pick it up and see if it has hinges or something like that. Yeah, I mean, I pick it up and hold awesome. it in my hands and, and uh, examine so, it. Couple facts. First off, it is far heavier than it should be um so whatever it's made of is not um uh, it's not normal um and then like as you pull it out and you kind of like tinker with it and you're like what the hell why would anybody even want and then for a split second as you're touching it um the room that you're in something um uh, affects your vision and like the room darkens and what you do is you see like a star map um and and you see like particular like stars or constellations or whatever like light up for a split second um and then that that that's pretty much it for the effect right now like the the box that you're holding also seems to get like 
cool special effects like somebody spent some money on the budget so like it has like <laughs> star constellations and and shite on it you know it's, it looks like sparkly and cool uh but but yeah uh, like it, it projects this like star sphere around you and you can actually like see it for a second um yeah. what do you if do? only you had a like your own bunk in which to decorate your ceiling with that cool <laughs> lamp <laughs> like, <laughs> but no <laughs> that's totally what this should be is a lampshade <laughs> just like hang this in your room so you have cool psychedelic disco wall all the time not like it's hidden star systems or other no. like <laughs> valuable <laughs> data well i think as, the worst. As, a, as a journalist i'm very interested in what information this might hold so if it's only for a split second i think i try to make it happen again oh as long as you're holding it um you're you're, you're seeing this and as a matter of okay. fact uh the longer you hold it the less you are in a room with cool star patterns around you and the more you're feeling like you're standing in the middle of space looking around at specific star systems so. And you said that some were marked specifically yep. in some way. Some right? ones like light up almost like in an order, but it's, it's, I mean, you're in an arbitrary pointed space looking at a star chart that you may or may not recognize. Nothing. It's, it's not like you're looking at stars from where you're standing. It's, yeah. Uh, I don't know if you like, like go or put it away or, or keep it or write down notes or what. Well, I think, I think I, maybe write down notes. I think I'm a little bit familiar with these things. I'm I'm fairly highly educated. So yep. maybe recognize some things. I would love to be walked in on since I don't have my own room. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Awesome. So which, yes. which which one of you walks in on this? Uh I think this is totally a Boz. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, uh, Boz is our ship mechanic, right? That's we. That's and, kind of where that's. And sit. so, d is it possible that this thing, like you said, the lights dim? I realize that that's primarily an effect for the user, but does this thing possibly have any kind of power interruptions? Might it make the ship hiccup yeah, or act weird? Um, so, oh, in, case in case it's even remotely unclear, this is obviously a precursor artifact. Of yeah, something. totally got um, it. And so, yeah, you see, like these, like weird, like. Like like lights flickering kind of effects, uh, for sure. Yeah. As yeah. So that seems like a totally good reason why our you know Maz the mechanic would yeah. go in to the uh, to see what's going on. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So so I think I'm observing this and trying to piece together patterns, trying to understand like who would have made this map, what is it of, um, and and I'm kind of like in this reverie that the box kind of creates. <laughs> And uh, then Boz comes storming around the corner <laughs> and it's like, what are you doing? And I drop the box so I can drop it on the ground. <laughs> and it's like really heavy. So I imagine it makes like this really like, like bang, flat. Uh, yeah, it, it actually makes a significant noise, but as it falls, like it's not like falling flat. It's like falling yeah. like a little tilted and you expect it to like hit and bounce and it doesn't, it just stops. And it's like tilted on edge as if like it's defying physics. Uh, and as a matter of fact, uh, when Lauren turns around for a couple of seconds until the effect wears off, uh, Lauren's eyes are pitch black and you can see star systems through them for like a second or two. None of this is good. None oh, of it's, this. <laughs> it's fine. It could possibly be. No, it's totally fine. <laughs> anyway. Uh, that's not yours. Well, it was in my quarters. <laughs> You don't have quarters. Remember, you won't let me forget. Yeah, but this is where I sleep in the in the cargo bay. Um, and it was just it was nearby, and I thought I'd check it out. Maybe you should put that away. Maybe. Okay. okay. Yeah. Like, like, never have gotten it out. Put it away. I don't know that that's possible, possible. but but I pick it up and put it back in the box and close the box it takes like two or three tries because it like won't <laughs> shut correctly and then finally you get it like, i'm yeah, sure it's so, super like, systems don't start again i'm sure it's super embarrassing because like lauren's like pushing on the thing like, <laughs> and it gets to the point where boz just is, does the like i'm gonna stand there and cross my arms and just <laughs> 
Yeah. And so I, I closed, finally get the box closed. And then I noticed that the rings aren't turning the way they had been. And I like try to manually turn them to get them started. <laughs> sure. Maybe, maybe that's how it works. <laughs> like try, try, try. No, it's fine. It's fine. And, just, like, <laughs> go. Yeah. and I'm going to end up just like, look at you, look at the busted box. You're real good at that. Thank you. <laughs> Is that where we smash to? Where we're oh, like, yeah. like, where uh, yeah. we like smash into like when we just got out. We say like, you're really good at that. You know, <laughs> like and, it was like sneaking out. And then Lauren's like sweating profusely, eyes dashing as we're on the street again at this juncture. Yeah. yeah. Like, yeah. Gorgeous. Awesome. I like uh, it. So now you know what's in the box and uh, what are what are all y'all doing now that there's a group of people that yeah. have picked up your... You know, we should probably get a drink. We should get a drink right now. We should get a drink right now. This yeah. was, we were just at a bar. You didn't get a drink at that bar. We didn't have time, but that one over there is loud and dark and full of fog. Awesome. You want to slip into another bar and ditch them that way? I like it. Uh, are you are you folks going to go in the bar and sit there? Are you going to go in the bar and, and cut through the kitchen? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yep. Just keep going. Yep. All right. And are uh, we running or are we going casual? We have, I really want a drink. We're just going to go at, I really need a drink because it's been a long day and that's I what. I like it. This box that somebody broke. <laughs> Awesome. So I think that um, I think that you folks are going to slip into the bar without any difficulty. There's no roles involved in just walking in a bar. Uh, you walk up to the bartender. You order a drink. Uh, you see at least uh, you know uh, uh, you actually see a squad of three: two system cops and one Malclade house guard uh, walking in, uh, and they're looking around almost as if they're looking for you. And you notice that the Malclade house guard is holding something. Uh, you're not you're not sure what, but it's like a scanner or like a tablet of some sort. Mm. Um, and like an er, like a precursor artifact detector or something, you know? Yeah. Uh, oh, th there's no universal precursor artifact detector, but okay. it might be detecting something. Uh, maybe yeah. a, a weird signal from a broken box. Maybe you know something. what? When I see that, I was just about to say I I'm gonna make a point to put that. I'm gonna walk myself kind of around the corner or fuddle. Like, are we up? Oh, there we go. So we're wait like getting these drinks. We're at the bar. I will just pull the two of you real close to me, and I'm gonna pop the box open, drop the box on the ground, and put this like hold this stupid brick or like stuff it into my like jacket, so that now uh, I have this unbelievably heavy. Stu it's gonna be awkward and so terrible. Here, here's the thing that's gonna happen. It's gonna make a star map. It's gonna make a star map. Yeah. But Baz is not clever. Uh, but Baz is not clever. <laughs> so Baz, you, you pick this thing up. You, you. By the time that the thing hits the ground, uh, you're already starting to see the like darkness coming. Oh yeah. yeah. Here's a new mechanic that we're yes. demonstrating for our viewers. It's an awesome mechanic. So in Blades, when the consequences of your actions cause something to happen that you're just like, I'm not sure about that. Like if I as the GM, yeah. so in, in, a, in a very traditional game, in something like D&D, when the GM says you take 10 hit points of damage, your, uh, your only recourse is to like mark that down on your sheet. Right. In Blades, you can actually look me straight in the eye and say, nope, and you can resist an effect. Uh, so you can like grit your teeth and like hold your willpower and focus your eyes in like the real world here and just basically try let's, and power let's stay through. here. Let's do a lot of that. So a whole bunch of nope. Awesome. <laughs> whole bunch of nope. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. So uh, what we're going to do is called resistance roll. Cool. Uh, How do we do that? The way that you do it on your sheet is, in particular, resistance rolls are a lot like uh, saves in D and D. Okay. Uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to do a resistance roll with your resolve. And your resolve is willpower, um, like people trying to convince you stuff, and mm -hmm. also in this case, like being able to like shake off the effect of precursor artifacts. Nice. So if you open your sheet and you yeah. click on the word that says resolve, uh, it's it's going to ask you for some bonus dice. You're going to say zero because you don't have any bonus dice at the moment, and then you're just going to submit it, and it's going to roll your resist. Now, there is a price. You're going to take six minus whatever you roll the highest, in terms of stress so it costs you stress to yeah it does push Making that bad choices so you said no bonus dice correct no bonus dice at the moment no boom what terrible thing happens so oh. uh well let's see you, you, you roll the five not, not bad so it takes, nice it takes one stress and mm -hmm. what happens is as long as you are not if you are physically with your skin touching the artifact 
you're able to see the world, but it's a little hazy. Mm -hmm. uh, but if once you put it in your coat or in a pocket, you feel it trying to take your consciousness to that place into space, but you're, you're able to like fend it off enough that you're able to focus on the present world. Nice. Nice. Sheer willpower. That's <laughs> right. That's good. Uh, so and like, so on your sheet, uh, the like kind of the left hand side, you see there's like this little stress lightsaber marks. Mm -hmm, and if you click mm -hmm. on that first one, boom, it will, it will, there you go. Love boom. it. Nice. Awesome. She got tracked. All right, cool. Uh, uh, so you're, you're, <laughs> you're putting this thing, you're putting this thing in your pocket. So now um, I'm, I'm going to reveal a little bit of information, which is to say, I'm going to put one more tick mark on this yeah. getaway clock because, mm -hmm. uh, there were indeed people that were hunting a broken box, and you have just gained some advantage on them. Nice. Uh, so you Stick leave hunches under a bar, like in a booth or something, and you snag some drinks, and and you're headed towards your crew. Um, uh, as as you as you like sit down or like, uh, are you folks like pounding a drink and getting out, or are you like, what? what how yeah, are you I doing? think we're trying to like drink as fast as we can without looking like we're drinking as fast as we can. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Um, Boz is a little more purposeful and maybe kind of distracted with rather than drinking, but like a drink is yeah. nice. Awesome. Uh, so it looks like the the uh, the system cops are starting to go through the bar. They're getting a little bit closer. Uh, you notice that they are skewing towards wherever it is that you left the box. So that's that's part of how you know that you're uh, you had an effect there. That's um, great. The box is somewhere not between us and the kitchen or wherever and, uh, our exit is. <laughs> And as I mentioned, uh, you see a couple more people walking in, uh, looking around. Uh, they seem to have disguises, but they're all wearing like the same type of disguise. <laughs> uh, so like, uh, and, 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 I don't, and I don't mean like you know goggles and a mustache, but like all of them have like a, a, like a, a headscarf that like hides their features a little bit. Maybe some like goggles which they don't need to be wearing because it's like on the lower levels and kind of dark. Sure. And they have the same type, same color of rags, so it's obvious that whoever sourced their costume is going to pop. <laughs> They all have the same uh, wish. Th this <laughs> isn't a bad budget show, people. This is no, just... This is intentional. <laughs> this is intentional. The hegemony oh, likes them. to dress their people up. Uh, yeah, this, is actually, this is actually... Yeah, I don't feel comfortable. Yeah, I was going to say, uh, I don't feel confident so, that these people are hegemony. Yeah. Um, uh, so uh, you see them looking around, and they're talking about something, and you see like one of them like talking into like their sleeve, yeah. which obviously they shouldn't have a communicator necessarily on them. Uh, so... Uh, what are you, you folks are finishing up your drinks. What are you folks doing? I think, I think like the moment we kind of see that they look away, that's when we, we bolt out the back. I, I feel awesome. like this is like, oh crap, we pr we're pretty sure that we're made. If, if everybody, both the cops and these mysterious folks came in here, like they're either onto us or they're onto us fast. So I want to, mm -hmm. I want to take Boz's plan. And I think, uh, um, yeah, Faye has run out of a few bars through the back before, so she's going to lead this one and say, awesome. like, let's go. And just, you know, what it feels like the moment is right, uh, bolt, out the, uh, bolt out the back. Great. I think as, as we're having this, that conversation, I'm kind of saying, these other people, they might be able to help us, actually. And maybe we should go talk to them. And so, like, as you say, let's go, and y'all start running, I, I have this moment of being like, oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> almost starting to talk to them uh, gently snag your shoulder and like let's go yeah, yeah. uh Thanks. awesome so uh i i don't think that there's any trouble um getting through the kitchen and popping out the back door you the cooks are obviously yelling at you there's like big pots with like strange alien ingredients yeah uh, it's like, really good and, and, yeah. and you see oh yes uh, <laughs> all sorts of, like uh spices from a kenny and there's like weird like uh, animals from different places that are like hanging up on the on, on, on hooks that they're using to prepare the foods and you know as you're as you're running out you hear yelling in a bunch of different languages including like the standard hegemonic common which in our show translates to english i guess um and as you guys are bolting out i'm gonna have all of you do a group scramble action which sean has volunteered to lead uh yeah. and since we've done a group skulk action you should you should know how this goes but we'll, we'll step through it again um what's everyone's scramble mine is nothing oh one zilla, one zilla. Mine is one as well. Cool. Does anybody wish to push or spend a gambit or assist someone? I would like to push. Awesome. So spend two stress, you get plus one die, which in your case will be just one, but that's still 50-50. <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah, so, one one is one is much better than two. Keep the lowest. Yeah, got it. Okay, so we that's two stress for me, and <laughs> this is risky and our effect is our effect is standard, right? Correct. Uh, and the risk is that you might run into more trouble, uh, but you'll get away from the people chasing you in the bar. At right. Least. Mm-hmm. It seems like there's trouble around every corner. Um, <laughs> that is how this goes. You're carrying music. something that lots of people want. <laughs> yep. Yep. All right. Uh, cool. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to scramble. Um, All right. We discussed we were looking scramble. It's risky and it's standard. Yep. No bonus time. Okay. Right. Jory doesn't cause stress. Check so you far, out. we're at a four. Oh. Okay. Four, four, four. Wow. Four is the uh, four, isn't it? Awesome. So, uh, we, uh, so I'm going to add nice. two more slices to your pie. Nice. Ooh. Uh, which I've added a little condiments because of Andy's pizza comment earlier. <laughs> uh, but, uh, yeah, so uh, you're making it way, right? Like How far along are we? Uh, you are one, two, three, four, five. Five, uh, five segments out of eight. Nice. So you're pretty far along. You're past the halfway point. Love it. Uh, oh, we, no, we should be at six. The first time we got three. Yeah, I thought so too. And then we got one more for the pull out of the box. I will. I will. Uh, I will so we've eaten everybody. more of the pizza than we thought. Oh, no regrets. It. I have regrets. I would like more pizza, please. We're going to get more pizza, I suspect. Just maybe not this moment. Yeah. Uh, awesome. So uh, so cool. So y- you folks are, are booking it out. Uh, you get out of this alleyway. Uh, you look back towards... Uh, so on a four to five, you make it out, but there's complications. Right. Uh, mm-hmm. So you get out into this alleyway, and as you look back towards the mouth of the alleyway, you realize that there's a couple of those people with the, like head scars and the like weird kind of tattered ropes which are a little out of place in the lower sectors but you know our unsubtle friends exactly your unsubtle friends uh you see one of them is like checking out the mouth of the alleyway and kind of like points and it's like hey hey like you get the definite like there they go but we've Uh, been spotted and uh you (laughs) you folks are booking right so like you're 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 you've got a decent lead and you're tucking left and right and going out of the alleyway and you realize that there is one last faction, because there were actually three factions chasing this. <laughs> um, there's one last faction in your way. Uh, and uh, from the looks of them, they're local. And in, as a matter of fact, you guys recognize them. Uh, a lot of people call them the Ashen Knives, but they're actually the Ashen Knives. Uh, yeah, they've got a weird mm-hmm. kooky name that's not noted anywhere, but it's how I pronounce it, at least at our home group. Uh, so the oh. Ashen Knives, yes. Uh, as a matter of fact, one of the Ashen knives is somebody that one of you knows, uh, which would happen to be, uh, I believe, the muscle. So uh, mm-hmm. Baz, Baz, yeah. you know, and Aya yes, is there, uh, and she did not expect to. Uh, Aya, he, she, she, they are cool. Uh, human, do you know? Human. Awesome. Uh, so uh, now, one of the things that I, I I'm going to ask is, is Aya your favored or non favored or just flat out contact? Thumbs up. Thumbs up. Thumbs up. Uh, the good friends. You, you yes. might even get bonus dice and this might be controlled. She looks stunned that the target that she's chasing yeah. is there. And as a matter of fact, I'm going to give you a tiny piece of information uh, just because you know Aya so well. Yeah. Um, do you remember your contact that had the like crazy like knife scar? So uh, for those of you watching, Aya is a muscle contact who also happens to be an assassin. So Aya is an Ashen knife assassin. Uh, and you recognize her her hallmark blade. She has a very wicked curved uh, dagger that's made out of some like weird ceramic substance. Uh, and yeah, awesome. so you're running into this like handful of Shen knives. You know that they're you, you get the gist that they're there to ambush you, but for a split second, everybody freezes because you've got at least one person who's like, whoa, whoa, whoa hang on. Um, what do you do? I think we should make a deal with these people. <laughs> um yeah i think it's kind of like i think you know mm-hmm. uh uh Faye was the one sort of in the lead but she 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 pulls to a halt when when we see them and because she doesn't have any re- relationship with them she's sort of scanning around like where where could we run sure and, and i feel like baz could step in to yeah they say hi buddy <laughs> totally there's there's quite a lot of enthusiasm yeah <laughs> yeah uh, um, I, what do I think? Like everybody wants the thing, but I also, hmm. like my, I think, I think that Boz is definitely going to, is inclined to just sort of 
while not coming in too close, be real excited and like say hi. Just something really ridiculous in like flat face <laughs> like that, right? Like I get to see you here. Uh, I don't yeah. know, like just something uncomfortable and <laughs> unwise. Um, cool. So I think that that um, for a split second, uh, uh, I I uh, like doesn't know how to respond because you know there's orders and then there's what's yeah. going on here. And for a split second, um, you know she goes like, "All right, we're moving." And she looks at her crew and she's got like two or three Ashen knives with her, and they they seem like. Lo- like lower so like obviously when you look at like a crowd there's like the mooks and then there's the obvious pc and aya is like the cool assassin right oh, and like yeah. with the, the wicked blade are, yeah and, and with the wicked blade yeah she's actually got like this like weird row of knives on her spine right like uh several knives in sequence uh and and like like a, a a long braid and like you know obviously it's like wearing like uh, an awesome like black outfit or something um and the rest of them are like obviously like kind of like mob goons, right? Like they they, they look nice, but like obviously they're they're right. They're, not, they're bad. They're hooded, but... they're the, the hooded mooks that. Uh... Right. Uh, so 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 yeah. So one of them, uh, you know, like you, you see one of them looking at Aya and is basically just like, "No, uh, we have our orders," and she's like, uh, "Orders in a couple minutes. We need to get them off the street." And so like she gestures and like you folks like run a couple like nice. like a half block and like tuck into a room and close it and you see like a couple of people with the like weird hoods like run by and then like you see some cops like system cops and and uh the the one buck like house guard running by and um after that's said and done uh aya is going to turn around and look at all of you so like you guys are in some like side room and and there's like a big metal door that you close that like you know says something like I don't know, closet or janitor's closet or something right. like, like just something nice. on the door utilities. where they like take the trap. Yeah, utilities. There you go. Yeah, um, nice. And so uh, there's she some universal utility symbol on it. Um, and, and is uh, it is it just her and us, or is all all of her no, mooks? It's, it's, it's her and a couple of her mooks and the three of you. So you guys awesome. are, if not exactly on par in terms of scale, pretty close, right? So uh, she she, uh, she looks at all of you and says like. Um, what are you doing here? I was supposed to like go after a target and do you have it? A, a point of clarification are when I kind of look to Boz and then look to Aya and look back, I'm like, have we been abducted here? I'm just like, and, and, and Faye's sort of trying to break the tension in, yeah. in whatever way she can. Like she wants to sort of like, like put people, uh, like like bring the t- room temperature down a tiny bit nice. um so she's like because i know if i thought we were being abducted but that happened one time and they were really rough and you all seem much friendlier and better dressed much better dressed my previous captors really grungy folks they obviously had not invested in showers uh on their ship and uh it was it was it was stinky in there but this no this is not as bad um so i want to say we're just old friends talking, right? And I'm 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 trying in in, in phase talking too much kind of way to uh Is there a lot of hand gesticulation with that? Yeah, there's like, a lot the- of hand yeah. gesticulation. <laughs> like I, I do like the burlap sack being pulled over my head. <laughs> um, like emoting yes. and uh so I don't think I'm gonna kinda like sell Aya on whatever we're going to sell her on, but I would like to soften her up a bit. I think uh, maybe it's a setup action or maybe just sort of like oh, okay. dismiss. Nice. Uh-huh. Is that a reasonable thing to do, or is it too tense that like that would be like frustrating? Because I, I think she's also a good sense of like when it's gonna just when she's gonna annoy somebody too. Um, so I'll tell you what. Uh, when, uh, I'm I'm not gonna make you make a roll because there's no serious obstacle to you just talking and trying to diffuse the air. Okay. So maybe this will go like you'll see that like maybe they have like like right right as they they demand you know she says like do you have it uh you see that the the rest of the hm knives like actually like reach for their weapons and they have sensible weapons like blasters um but uh the like as as you're like whoa, whoa, whoa we're just fast friends and like oh man my previous captor smell terribly like you, you see them like being like oh okay these folks are just fools or or you know this is nice this is gonna be over pretty quick so like they, they chillax just a little bit. Yeah, um, cool. If I could get them to go from like weapons partially out of the holster to like hands on the weapons so they can pull them out, like just that enough, that much is enough to 
Like, yeah, totally. Um, so, but uh, again, you don't you don't necessarily sway them uh, that's fine. In, in the sense that that you're like the, the question here is like what's what's going to be the next what's going to be the outcome here? Like they've obviously sure. come from the item. Uh, what do you what do you folks do? Yeah, I think yeah. I think I turn on my like not just the journalist charm, but my like okay. I'm I'm a presenter. I have a show, the news show, and people talk to me and like turn on that kind of charm. Well, like I'm still sweating. I have like anxiety sweat all over the place. And maybe so, real sweat for because we just ran down. Yeah, true. Layers I think, of I think maybe I work out. I'm used to that. I'm not used to having oh, people. You totally work out, don't you? <laughs> <laughs> um, but so with space so weights. I, I kind of like t- <laughs> turn this around where I'm have been like, oh my God, what's happening? This has never happened in my life. <laughs> this is terrible to be like, all right, here's my milieu. Tell me about you, Aya. <laughs> awesome. Uh, um, so are, are you trying to extract information out of them? Are you trying to convince them of something? What are you? I'm, I'm trying to extract, extract information. So they're, they're the tiniest bit buttered up and I'm trying to butter them up a little bit more. And cool. um, largely, I want to say like we're kind of in this together and what is this thing and what do you what do you why are you looking for it and what does it do i think uh before you do that we should uh sorry i was just i just was losing track of time oh yeah huh we should uh take a take another break and then come back for our last hour or a last part of an hour or so something like that Mm -hmm. so uh is that is that cool if we yeah i'm I'm down with that that cliffhanger that for the break yeah great all right all right we'll be back uh in let's see if i can get my timer going get snazz all snazzy start you oh come on now there we go boom and we'll be back soon 